Welcome back to the Married at First Sight Season 12 Episode 14 Review. This is Couples Couch with Pat and I'm Cam. Let's get into this week's episode. This episode was called Expected a Little Better and I can't tell y'all how much I expected a little better out of what I saw in this episode. I expected a better season. So, <laughs> so you didn't expect I, a little I, better. I expected you better contestants. Better. <laughs> Season, <laughs> experts, everything. <laughs> Family members, the dogs, everybody. Yeah, Maybe yeah. the episode should have been below expectations. <laughs> this, <laughs> I'm just this, saying. It should have been the season. <laughs> Seriously. Married at first sight, below expectations. expectations. And then we would have known what to do. Atlanta. Come with. <laughs> Let's get into this week's episode. This will be a high level overview. If you are new to our channel and do not know already, we do not get into every nitty gritty detail of what happened in the show. We only talk about what's important to the storyline of each couple. We will not be recapping last week's episode. If you wanna see what happened in last week's episode, look in the description box below. I will drop the link for you guys for episode 13, but let's get into episode 14 right now. With a little more than two weeks left until decision day, the show opens up showing the couples going um, to share their personal experiences so they can connect with their new spouse, right? Yep. So pretty much that's what this episode was about. Them trying to show their spouse who they really are and what they're into as young people and now here they are as adults. So yeah. first scene shows Eric and Virginia at Eric's childhood home, they're looking through photos of him um, and his medals of the, you know, at the Air Force, uh, his yearbook. Baseball. Baseball was one of them. He, he talked about how when he was young, he was able to travel and attend all sorts of tournaments and how he would be able to love to do that with his own kids. And because family is just so important to him. And I don't know what trigger happened there for Virginia, but she started with the waterworks and the crying like he says that in family is important to him but he doesn't try to make an attempt to call my family like i've reached out to his family members his sister-in-law his mother and try but to create relationships whole time she went years without talking to her dad and now i gotta strike up a conversation <laughs> in a, a relationship with him right. in the first month i barely know you, you. And got to deal with all your mood swings. And, and keep in mind, you guys, they've only been together for a and month and a half. The first three and a half weeks was trying to raise Rocky alone. So how is he going to try? And, and I had a question about that. How you got a support dog that caused more drama <laughs> and, and stress? Can we change that from a support dog to a drama dog? Yeah. <laughs> I'm for real though, but that ain't. A, <laughs> I'm you, just saying. It's you just can't even put the support dog harness on that dog. <laughs> 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 I, I, you ever go outside? He biting the cord. I, I, I you look like your heard. dog needs support. You gotta have a support hamster for your support dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying she is worried about the wrong thing and she should really be trying to connect and build her own relationship with her parents because she, she should be to. trying to quit drinking is what she should be trying to do <laughs> well, as far as her parents are concerned i'm just saying she said she had strained relationships with them herself in the past so it's kind of heavy for you to try to push that off on eric six weeks into knowing you like it will come you know and the man works that ain't and even is what gone it's gone with every 15 days? That ain't even what it's about. Let's do the math. That ain't even what it's about. What is it about? By going back to his home and seeing his upbringing, she was face it's to face with what the expectation was going to be for her. The, oh. the baseball, the kids, yeah. the family. Yeah. I'm sure you you walk in the house and just the aura was like very homely. Yeah. It was. Not yeah. like homely like she, stale, but like homely like in a good comforting. way. Comforting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. He and don't take this the wrong way. Virginia is more of an outside cat than an inside cat. Let me tell you something. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> so like a stray? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not calling the girl a stray. Okay. But I never had cats. But you know, you go over to some people's house. Yeah. And they open the door and the cat's like, Phew, and you're like, yo, yo. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. He'll yeah. come back. Yeah. That's Virginia. And then you go to some people's house and you open the door. They're like, yo, don't let the cat out. Right. Like, it never goes outside. Right, right. That's what Eric's looking for. And I also want to add an extra small point, and then we're going to move on to the next scene because we don't need to be giving this that much energy. Yeah. But I do want to say, I think being in his house and seeing all these pictures and seeing the good upbringing he had maybe was also a trigger for her on what she did not have growing up as well like i think it was a trigger for the voids that she did not have growing up as well so yes it may be a trigger for her to say this is my what the expectations i gotta live up to but it's also probably what i didn't have growing up and a hmm. slight bit of envy yeah. too you know you don't know him you know it jealousy yeah. is a hell of a drug <laughs> yeah and you know what that is that is a good point but yeah. I'm going to stick with mine. I think that Pussycat was just wild. I'm moving on to the next scene. <laughs> next scene shows Brianna and Vincent. See, I didn't say Brinson. <laughs> First at, time at, since season, since only episode took 14 two. 14 weeks. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Brianna and Vincent are um, at a dance studio. Brianna has brought Vincent here to show her what she was into as a child and tap dance and just dance is her thing and how she, you know, connected as her or had an outlet for her growing up. Right. She did mention that um, this was an outlet for her because um, she had an internal insecurity battle. I was like a little insecure internally because of like my skin tone. It was always this light skin versus dark skin thing. I thought I was like unattractive or I wasn't as cute as other people. Just being so dark. I'd say between 15 and 16, I was like, you're, you're enough, like you're beautiful. Felt being of darker skin tone um, made her feel inferior to lighter skin people. And- <laughs> Listen, I had my own struggles. I could barely read. You only worry about being dark. And I'm like, I hope this teacher don't ask me to read out loud. Please, God, don't let this teacher like, ask me. I had my own struggle. Yeah. My skin color was the last thing I was yeah. worried about at school. Like, oh, now That's I got to be the, but you see that light skin boy? The one that can't read? Listen, and all, all jokes aside, when <laughs> she said that, I completely connected with her in that moment. Because being of browner skin tone, I as well went through that same internal insecurity feeling like I wasn't pretty because I was browner or, you know, than my friends who were of, of lighter skin tone. I always I did feel that way for a very long period and, of time. And I don't get it because your skin tone is beautiful. Oh, I would have thought it would have been the buck teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Why I can't be great? I've seen a picture with you. <laughs> I don't care. Like, like Brianna said, I am enough and I am beautiful. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but you was a kid, so ain't nobody been looking for you. At, but at 15 and 16 years old, which is around the same time I felt what Brianna was feeling, and even into like my young adulthood, it wasn't until like... You know, in the last, what am I, 37, maybe in the last 10, 15 years that I really started to feel comfortable in my skin tone. Honestly, like I I did feel the same exact insecurity. So I do connect with her. So my heart kind of melted when she said that. I was like, oh my God, we have the same, or had the same struggle. Like it's real, you guys, feeling like you're not um, enough because you're not of a lighter skin tone like it's just not a good feeling it's not a good place to be and now she wake up every morning and be like i'm about to kill these mother let me show you here i go <laughs> like mystical here i go <laughs> i'm just kidding so after brianna said that um she overcame that insecurity um she also mentioned that she would be you know be sure that her kids don't have to go through that or, or instill like, you know, values in them to know that they are enough and that 
they will be afforded a lot of opportunities and Vincent was like oh okay good so and she was like yeah but that's a long time from now and he was like a long time from now and she's like yeah that's a long time from now and his face became an entire mood like he needs deliverance from his face because that's where all the anger shows first it's better to show, here. show in your face right now then in a year from now, when she's steadily trying to push having kids down the road, that which she's entitled she's to. She's entitled to. Don't come in my throat. Don't come for But us. he has <laughs> firmly and pointly said he wants three kids. Yes. And he wants to start soon. Yes. Yeah. So that's what that scene. And especially with her high blood pressure, shouldn't she want to have the kid earlier? Rather than later, than later. So it won't be high risk because I believe 35 and over is high risk unless the, they have changed the age. You don't know these days. They change stuff around. But what did you think about Brianna's dancing? She does tap dance. Yeah, and I thought this would really bring them together and give them a connection because if you all remember earlier on in the season at the uh, bachelor party, Vincent is a connoisseur of the dance <laughs> in I, all shapes and sizes. I think Different type of dance. He's it's all dance. <laughs> it's it all. Le- that guy I don't want to say. Had nothing to do with tap. <laughs> <laughs> it all leads to the same stage if you do it long enough. <laughs> Broadway. Wait a second. All right, let's move on to the next scene. <laughs> the next scene shows Ryan going to meet up with Clara's mom. Um, They talk about how Clara was when she was younger. He asked her for advice on how to deal with Clara. She said that you need to have patience. They talk about kids. They talk about the one thing that she really needs. They talk about kids. And Ryan says he does want kids and believes that it's very important to raise kids in the church. Um, Clara's mom said that she started going to church once she had Clara because she thought at that point in life it was important to attend Ryan is hopeful that Clara will have the same energy once she has kids and will, you know, want to raise them in the church. So he's feeling a little more positive after hearing that from her mom. And that's all that scene was about. And then he, well, you forgot, he asked her mom how he, how she thought Clara was going to feel when he asked her to artificially inseminate their kids to avoid intercourse. (laughs) I'm moving on to the next scene. Y'all see what I got to deal with? Uh. <laughs> next scene is a high-level overview. Eric FaceTimes Virginia's dad because he felt guilty because she done bawled in his mama's house about how he didn't call her daddy. So he called the man. They had a real awkward conversation about trying to catch up because they don't know each other from a hole in a donut. And that's what that scene was about. <laughs> Too high level? Mm, no. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go. Let's move on to the next scene. Next scene shows Haley and Jake. They're at the batting cage, um, just, you know, having some fun, trying to connect with each other, I guess. Haley hit eight pitches out of 10, and Jake hit um, out of, and Jake had 20 pitches and only hit two. And talk so, about it was too slow. Yeah, it was at 60 miles per hour. He you, said that. You it was can't too calibrate slow. in 20 pitches? <laughs> <laughs> so Haley clearly won, and she was too excited about that. But then they went and sat out like by the little patio area and she went right in on his outfit. Of course, she should have. She said that he's in his typical uniform, you know, dream, dreams, <laughs> jeans <laughs> and dress shoes. I put that together. I seem to put words together in my head. Jeans and dress shoes like is it's what a good he thing. wore. <laughs> yeah, I just put stuff together. Just I make, make up words. <laughs> so it's my thing. I thought he looked sharp. I mean, okay, what he wore wasn't for that particular activity, but he he looked good. He still was sharp. It was good for, like, chilies in the movie. <laughs> Not to go hit baseballs or softballs. Listen, I feel like if Judgmental was a person, she stayed judging him on what he got to wear. Everybody at the batting cage judged him on what he wore to the batting cage. I see. I, I agree. I'm not saying he shouldn't. Then what are you talking about? No, shoes, and then he, he said, still look good. I, "I don't like I don't like tennis shoes." He you you know why? You do that. 
Kamara be like, I'm about to go for a walk around the block. Hey, I see her at the front door. She got on them furry flip flops. <laughs> hey, what are you going because for a walk? This is, I'm comfortable in, in the same. You're not supposed to be comfortable Jake. getting exercise. <laughs> supposed to push yourself. I'm just saying, Jake. We see each other. Like, and that's I why both like... of y'all only hit two balls out of twenty. <laughs> Jake sliding around all over the place. <laughs> Because he got slick bottom shoes on, <laughs> on AstroTurf. I, I hope you slip and fall. Oh, my gosh. Be quiet. Yeah. So, next, Haley decides to share some pictures of herself playing softball when she was young. She mentioned, mentioned that she really didn't play until she was seven years old. Um, seven or eight, because when she was four, she refused to put the helmet on. Like, they just they couldn't get her to wear the helmet at four, so she didn't really play until she was seven or eight and then she also gave another example that when she was four years old that her mom took her to go have swimming lessons and that she wouldn't get in the water and decided to just lay her towel out and just catch some sun because she just didn't want to and that was just kind of her way of showing like that's how she was as a kid like if she ain't want to do it she wasn't gonna do it but what i think is if you had a mama like mine and she took you out to this uh softball game or, yeah, team, actually. And you done told her that you ain't going to do it. You just get a little walk to the bathroom. And then I bet you by the time you come back, you're going to put the helmet on. Listen, listen, I work too many hours today. I'm not beating around the bush. She told that little helmet story. Uh-huh. And nobody outside your family that knew you at the time cares about that story. Right. And so he gave her no energy for that story, and she kind of caught an attitude. Well, he told her that she was a diva, and she was like, I'm a diva? What? What? Like, you just said you went out there and laid your towel on the side of the pool and laid there. You didn't want to swim. Diva. No, I know. I mean, like, why would you even tell this story? Like, I she's, think she's fake. That's what it is. Now that they've kind of... After he kind of blew up a couple episodes, it was like, we don't like it. Yeah. And they're like, well, let's make another, attempt. let's give it another attempt. Blah, yeah. blah. And she has kind of come along a little more. Yeah. You know why? Because she's fake. She's in her element. Yeah. She yeah. knows they're still going to sleep in different rooms. Yeah. She knows they ain't going to touch each other. Yeah. And now she's like, okay. Mm-hmm. Boom. Mm-hmm. Lastly mentions that her mom... Um, made sure that they tried a lot of different sports and required them to see things through to the end. And I think that was her way to imply that that's why she's here in this marriage so she can say she saw it through to the end. No, you're seeing it through to the end, Mama, because you're on a contract with Married at First Sight or they would light your ass up with that damn fine had you decided to say, <laughs> I don't want to do this no more. And it's Let's fake. Let's call a spade a spade. And it's fake. Now she's acting. Yes. She's right in and her the element. the Academy Award winner goes to Haley for Best Supporting Actress in a Scene with a Man with Jeans and Hard Bottom Shoes. <laughs> Let's move on to the next scene. So next, Dr. Pepper stops by to see Brianna and Vincent for a visit. They bring up the topic of sleeping in and whether or not this issue was remedied. Brianna says Vincent watches his phone for 30 minutes to an hour after she falls asleep at night. And he could be getting more sleep so he can wake up earlier so he can have, like, breakfast with her and be more productive in the day. Man, if you don't mind your business and get you a cereal bar in the morning. As soon as she said all that, again, his face was activated. Because she, she, I'm sitting here watching the show like, is she really talking about a grown man yeah. or a 15-year-old son of hers? Because... I, I just don't like the fact that you want to put the fact we need to eat breakfast together or why? Like, I'm not saying we we don't want to have quality time, but if I'm tired, tired, go get your taquito and hash browns and leave me alone. I'll get me something later. You can sit with me while I eat mine if if it's that that important. So most Saturday mornings, Patrick, you know, gets up way earlier than us. I like to sleep in on weekends because I'm like, I get up and hustle and bustle all week long. I want to sleep in. And sleeping in to me is whatever time my body says, okay, get up. And it's usually no no later than like 11-ish, and which is kind of late, but I feel good about it. You know, yeah. I felt like I got my rest in. Now I can BS for the rest of the day and stay up all hours of the night and enjoy my weekend. But during that time while I'm sleeping in, 
He gets up at 6 a.m. because he is like Brianna. He wants to enjoy his entire day off. Day off. And who am I to say, well, you need to stay in bed and sleep in with me. Or you say to me, I need to get up at 6 a.m. Because he gets up at 6 a.m. He runs to Bucky's, get his coffee, does his drive. You know, play all the kind of music that he can't usually play when his kids are in the I car. Wanted. Yeah, and just enjoy his best life in on the weekends, early as heck in the morning. I have, I could care less. <laughs> Drive your gas out to your heart is content. Buy ten cups of coffee. I don't care what you do. Get oh. breakfast if you want. Like. I just think, like, at a certain point in marriage, you come to realize, like, that is the small stuff. And right. that is what can cause division and arguments for no doggone reason. reason. Yeah, like, why are you telling me what time I have to get up in the morning? And why are you telling me what time to stop scrolling through my phone? Are you, this is my phone. I want to look all through all Instagram in the shade room to see everything that happened all day. Yeah. <laughs> So, we talk about Eric being controlling. Uh, Brianna got those same tendencies. Yeah, and Dr. Pepper almost had to force her to say, okay, well, what is the compromise? Because you're still just saying he needs to go to bed early. And she keeps saying, wake up earlier. And he's looking at her like, I told you I'm tired. And he's also looking at her like, please don't create the narrative on me that I'm lazy. Because I work hard. I'm out here driving in these streets so much to his body, he said, is aching. And he just wants to rest. They did come to a happy medium, though, about the sleeping in. Let me make sure I, I make that clear. Ain't no happy medium about what time I get up. Yeah, yeah. You don't dictate my sleep. Well, their compromise was to um, some days he'll wake up early to have breakfast with her and do productive things or whatever. I still feel like he going to sleep in when he want to sleep in, as he should. Like you're in a whole adult. You know what I mean? But that's anyways. A, that's just stupidest thing i ever heard that's their happy i get media. to sleep in on monday that it's not gonna work that's not how life works let that's me tell you like it's not works. gonna work <laughs> any all my married people out there drop a comment yeah like do you wake up earlier because your spouse wakes up early or do you just sleep until your heart is content as an adult because that's what an adult does. Drop it in the comment section below. Are you a spouse that requires and makes your your uh, your spouse do dumb stuff <laughs> for no reason? And does that spouse stay happy? Yeah. Or is he miserable and can't leave because he's got a mortgage and three kids? Whoa, but and as credit soon card as bills. but <laughs> as soon as that third kid get into college Yo, and this mortgage is paid off. Gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're so bad. But no, honestly, drop your comments in the comment section below. Do you require your spouse to wake up early with you? Is that a requirement? Are we missing the mark? Or am I just getting, that's why I'm getting all my beauty sleep in on the weekends. We don't require each other for much. Because if you require me or something, just like I said, I'm tired. Uh-huh. And I got high blood pressure. Whatever you do to me... <laughs> I'm going to do right back to you. If you make me Why get up early. I'm like Sealy from Color. I don't care. Until you do right that by would have been everything you do going to fail. I, I got attitude problem. I'm self-admitted. I got an attitude problem. You tell me I got to get up earlier and I know you go to sleep an hour and a half. Of, okay, well, I require you to scroll through social media for an hour and a half before Jeez. you go to sleep. Jeez. Play with me. No. Let's You're not going to require. That's the thing about requiring. You, if you make me do something, then that gives me the right to make you do something. I know. That's the thing about, you know, putting requirements on people. You tell me, wake up you early. Now you open up Pandora's box. All right, stay up later. Everything you tell me, I'm going to tell you the opposite. And we ain't going to work. And just like them, it ain't going to work. That is dumb. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you drive the car. Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, Saturday, I drive. It's the same Dumb concept. Get, Are you done? Yeah. I'm Can we done. talk about? I've been done, <laughs> but I'll keep talking. Can we talk about the rest of Dr. Pepper's visit? So after they came to that happy medium, <laughs> Dr. Pepper went in about the having the kids situation. Did they come to a, a happy medium on that? And Brianna said, "I want to provide clarification here." Um, I actually want to have kids. I just have a fear of um, having kids because of my high blood pressure. 
Vincent's face that ain't in what that you moment said. That ain't because he know that ain't what she she talked about fluids and other crap pain, last week. Pain and fluids. Pain and flu. You. So, um, Vincent said to her <laughs> that their happy medium was to do more research because she can't be the only person in the world that got high blood pressure and want to have kids. And he is so right. Like, please don't come for me with this, that. This like, high you, no- there's, there's ways around it. There you is think you ways. You can tell me when I got to wake up, Dr. but Pepper- I can't tell you I want kids and you need to give them to me? Well, those, those are two strong two different opposites but I know you, but I see your point but it's yeah you're <laughs> right one ain't got nothing to do with you and one got something to do with both of us you're right there are two totally different spectrums you got me. when you got I me. wake up is my business <laughs> if we have kids is our business okay you you good lastly Dr. Pepper asks Vincent are you willing to have or to adopt kids he no. He took a pause and he said he did not think about that as an option. He would need more time to think that about that. That pause was for the cameras. No. And that was the end of that scene. <laughs> Let's move on to the next scene. <laughs> next scene shows Eric and Virginia. They're at the gym to play basketball. <laughs> Double technical. <laughs> Players disqualified from the game. She got on Nike socks and Adidas shoes. Bow. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> Double technical. She's gone. Get out. Now you know if you come in to play a sport, you got to dress the part for the sport. And I know I'm being hypocritical because I just said Jake didn't. Yeah, Jake would have showed up in the <laughs> cowboy, the cowboy boots that they keep showing. And they got no bottom right and there. And got a hole in it. But, okay, if he would have showed up to the gym to play basketball in dress shoes and jeans, then that would have been really weird to me. But the fact that he was just standing in one place to hit the thing. He wasn't there to hit nothing, which is why he ain't hitting nothing. You got to dress for success. And, you know, we just being petty wop right now by talking about her socks and her sneakers. But you Everybody I, I should know that. feel like you I hate come that. out here with two different brands, especially Not Adidas. rivals. And Nike, you got you to have the book. You same time. You yeah. got to have the same <laughs> same thing. Kate, mix or, it up. Or it if doesn't you want to wear Nike socks and you don't put on Adidas, put on some da dun or something yeah. so that way you don't have a foul. Yeah, yeah on you, through can't, your you can't do that. Not Nike and Adidas? You That's, can't do that. Like I didn't even think they would go together. Like I didn't, I thought that Nike socks had something sewn in them. <laughs> Like that, a, that they don't fit in the Yeah, like a shoe. magnet or something. They won't go in the shoe. <laughs> and if you do, your toes will get crushed up. You wouldn't be able to walk. You can't do that. That's just how I live. But I guess everybody That's how we know you don't know and how she to play is, ball. She <laughs> need to go. She need to go ahead and take the Nike socks off and put on some Adidas socks. Yeah. Because she is not a Nike athlete. Her crossover was weak. I thought she could play. But then, you know, I am not... You know, I, I didn't think she was LeBron or nothing. Man. Or man. or her bas- Michael Jordan. Like, <laughs> I didn't uh, her I bas- think it was that. Her basketball days was 30,000 margaritas ago. Listen. <laughs> <Just, laughs> 60,000 shots. And you know, you know 500 what? barrels of beer ago. I, <laughs> I honestly thought she could play. But then Patrick pointed out to me, he was like, her handle is bad. Because she was wide with it. Like, she, that, that dribble she, was She would wide. dribble like I air dribble. Like, oh, 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 oh. And, and I can talk trash because I know I can't play. So I won't even try to go in the basketball gym. and okay. Or the gym, the basketball gym. See, this why I will play basketball at the gym. To act like I could play. Hey, Kamara, she wants us. Like Rick Rossi. She, she wants wasn't us. here shooting in the gym. <laughs> she wasn't here shooting in the gym. That was just a classic line. It really was. <laughs> Anyways, so Virginia shows Eric, you know, her skills that she can play. She said she was on um, a basketball team or a few basketball teams growing up in high school and junior high school, too. Um, Paid she, teams. <laughs> she went on to show she went on some traveling pictures. teams. <laughs> she went on to show them some pictures of herself in her jerseys um, and at games. And she shares that her parents, I guess at that at 
her senior game split up and neither parent was there for her. So she didn't have her parents to walk her out at the end, but her siblings were there. And she said that's where she learned to grow up and have to be independent early in life. So then she went on to say, well, then actually Eric went on to say, well, I, this is why I want you to know that, you know, you can, you have she me. She's like independent as long as she got her friends. And she, she said, she said, well, can I just want you and not need you? And I don't know where she was going with that, but. She was saying nothing That's really something between... that you say to a boyfriend, not your husband. You're supposed to be married and be serious with your spouse. You don't say, I don't want to have to need you. Like, yes, I need my be, husband. She don't want to be married. She wants somebody. She want a boyfriend that's okay with her going and sleeping with other, uh, in other dudes' <laughs> houses. This is facts. That's what she wants. Yeah, and we're going to move on to the next scene. We don't gave her too much energy with these Nike and Adidas socks. There's so many different fouls on the play here. I know that gym smell like tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, everybody look at my shirt. <laughs> Problem, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> if you were to rip that shirt open, I would be too through. I want to okay. wear this shirt when the world will open back up. Well, I'll move the microphone. All right, let's do this. Amateur hour. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. It's the midnight hour. <laughs> Haley and Jake are out at Putt Putt Golf. Uh, Jake said he golfed a lot when he was younger. He shares some pictures of himself, um, you know, just his younger self with his family. And then he brought out this golfing picture um, of his of himself at his company picnic. And I don't understand why these shorts was so short. But the first song that I heard, because you know I relate everything to either a song or a movie, but it was like I heard, look at them girls with the Daisy Duke song. I want you to look at them girls with the Daisy Duke song. Everybody. You are really getting it. I love it. She can chair dance her ass off. You put Don't you want to see me stand you up? You put them two feet on the ground. It's a wrap. You can't stand the dance. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> Tell me his shorts were not too short. And his thigh muscle was giving chokehold. <laughs> he could kill somebody with those he thighs. Can. You got to hold on to it with your thigh because... <laughs> I know somebody ain't running back to it. <laughs> you are so awful. Steroids is a hell of a drug. <laughs> you are so Haley was like, are you She was so thrown off. Me? She was like, absolutely no. That's a no for me, bro. What was he thinking about? Then he was like, you know, Haley gets really caught up about, you know, what I wear. Fake. She's fake. She's like, worried she about really image. Wound up is yeah. what she said. He, it's yeah. because she's worried about image. She, yeah. Like he needs yeah. more of a free. See, he needs a someone. Free spirit. Like what a, was a, what's her Amelia. name? Amelia. Yeah, she got a friend. She her her sister in law with that little yellow duck from last season. He probably <laughs> him and her. She'd be like, and then Jim. Blah, blah, blah. He'd be like, yeah, I forget the name of the duck, but y'all remember Amelia and Bennett. Bennett's sister. Bennett. <laughs> he needs to be in that, like a free spirit yeah. who don't get caught up on stuff. You know, I wouldn't but go. But not. Patrick show up with them, them shorts on. I'm definitely playing that background music. That's your theme music. <laughs> Look at them girls with the days of doing so. <laughs> if Patrick show up to anywhere with them shorts on, something has gone terribly wrong. <laughs> so anyway, she was not thrilled about that look. And he just thought it was fun. He was like, I just like to do goofy stuff, you know. I get that too. Fun. I get that too. Like. Yeah, he's lighthearted. You know, he's very lighthearted. He doesn't get caught up on the small stuff. Yeah, he's kind of corny though. Yeah, so, in his own, you know, free-spirited way. So, let's move on to the he's next He's going to be good for some 40-year-old. 
Well, he is almost 40. I, that's what I'm saying. He going to find himself a 40-year-old. Oh, his DMs are going up already. And love I'm the sure. hell out of him. Because, he, you know, he's definitely. He's a good dude. He gives me Robin Williams vibe. Like, he looks like Robin Williams a little bit to me. So, he's not really ugly. He's just got his own little quirks about it. And I'm sure there is somebody out here blowing up his DMs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. He's dry, but he's. Right. This is going to be another high level overview of this scene. Ryan and Claire go to Claire's house for a visit so she could just show him where she grew up. She goes to her room. They done turned it into a fitness center. They couldn't wait for her to go. I'm just kidding. That's not, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> but they did turn it into a fitness center. And she showed him all kinds of dresses that she had in her closet. Like when she was growing up, she used to wear. I forget where exactly she would wear them to. Who Remember? are you holding on to those for? I don't know, but they got like that plastic. You know, that same plastic that your grandmama and them, big mama had on those couches. And that carpet that she didn't want you to ruin. You, <laughs> had that same plastic you, over that you dress. You were one to talk about somebody's dress being in plastic. <laughs> Whose dress? What dress I got? Your that wedding big? dress. Every, you're supposed Did to. Did you ever send it off to get clean? I don't. In that box we had to get? I know. I know. I don't. You, it's I don't still up the there with your called. body on it. <laughs> still anyway, covered in your you scent. You messed up my high level overview. This is supposed to be a high. <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> to be a high level overview. Did you just shrug your shoulders at you me? You got turbulence. You just dropped a couple hundred feet. Okay. So let me bring it back up to 30,000 feet. So she shows him those old dresses in her closet. They sit down and eat lunch with <clears> her parents and they go into, you know, what she was into when she was young and she mentions that she had a Usher's confession CD that her mom broke in half because her mom thought it was very inappropriate that she was listen, listening to Usher's uh, confessions album at I think like 14 or 15 years old. And that's pretty much what they talked about in that scene. High enough? High. <laughs> Usher somewhere punching the air like why are you breaking up my CD but I did get the album sale for that or the CD sale for that so he's cool I'm sure it was probably burnt <laughs> a burnt copy yeah back in the day <laughs> you're probably right all right let's move on to the next scene the next few scenes show the couples writing letters to their younger selves first up is Haley and Jake um Jake and Haley are writing wrote letters to their younger selves and they read it to each other and then they move on and Haley asks Jake, or Jake asked Haley, I'm sorry, what would you tell yourself the night before the wedding? And she was like, you pretty much that you don't know what you're getting into. And he, she was like, what would you ask yourself? And he was like, I don't want to say. She's like, no, say. And he was like, okay, return the bracelet. I'd probably say re return the bracelet. <laughs> Oh, wow, infinity. You know, the, the bracelet thing is another issue that's just really weird to me. I got it. Three minutes later, I was down the stairs going down to walk down the aisle. So, I saw you that it looks like a necklace, and I had on a high-necked dress. I don't know whatever happened to the bracelet, but you never actually brought that around. I mean, didn't think it was a big deal that I wasn't wearing it around everywhere. That's not about wearing it around, but, like, you know, could have brought it to the apartment at least and had it as an option. This bracelet has been on Jake's spirit, rightly so. Yeah. Rightly so. He is not in the <clears throat> wrong for this. Um, I could see the the mix up in the beginning with Haley because she said she thought it was a necklace. So that's why she didn't put it. She didn't take it out the box. She, she assumed it was a necklace. She had a high cut dress on. She didn't think no more about it. She ran down to go get married. There's a whole lot of variables moving on that day. Right. I get that. But where she lost me on her side quickly was where she started to try to defend the fact that she ain't thinking about it. That a piece of jewelry is not on, a, right. uh, on her mind. You know what I mean? And, and that's the problem. And that is his exact point. It's like, I bought you something that I really wanted to gift you with because it was important to me to show you how much that you know i'm putting into this marriage and, and you're you, ungrateful <laughs> and you dismiss it stupid face <laughs> you <laughs> i'm sorry you dismiss it and act like it's not of any big concern she was like well i didn't think that you wanted me to wear it and he's like i'm not asking you to wear it i'm saying for you to have it in your possession so if you decide to put it on one day, at least it's here with you to have. 
I don't even think it's about being here in your possession. It's about you wanting to have something I gave you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then she tried to do the tit for tat thing. So she lost me even further when she's like, well, you didn't wear the hat that I gave you on our wedding day. And he was like, okay, $20 hat versus $800 bracelet. Like, come on, do the calculation here. And she got wound up again. And then that's when she got snarky and was like, so while we're on the topic of, you know, bringing up stuff about me, is there anything else you want to bring up? He gets snarky with me. I'm be like, yeah, why are you shaped like a juicy juice box? (laughs) That's the question you go ask? You asked me. (laughs) What else you got a problem with? You shaped like a juicy juice box juice. I can't. You With know, a little, straw. The little green one. Straw That top. you got to hold like this to put your Boop. straw in. <laughs> I'm not doing this with you. Boop. I'm like, I'm like but for real. She, she juicy, showed juicy. no regard to wanting something of value. And that means of, of sentimental value. That's really what it is. It wasn't the cost. It was the fact that right. it meant something to And him. he's brought in it. Uh, he's brought in brought it? In, <laughs> he's brought. Now you got me saying words I'm putting together. He's he's brought it up mm-hmm. a couple of different times. And next, actually, was she got snarky in that moment. She got silent. She got up. And then Jake hit her with the, the peace sign. And was like, take care. I loved every moment of that. He was like, yeah, I'm not doing this with you. No. Peace out. We are in Atlanta. Eight Look, time down. <laughs> that's how you're supposed to act when people tell you they don't like you. Facts. And, we're and in- you have to stay around them. Like. And how Jake has been acting. Yeah. Like, he tries to enjoy and He'll try to have some time. But at the end of the day, when we sitting here, I don't like you. Yeah. You told me you don't like me, and I'm not messing with you. Right. It's facts. It's all facts. But let's move on to the next scene. Dr. Pepper stops by Ryan and Clara's apartment for a visit. Dr. Pepper asks Clara, did you all discuss how it makes you feel when Ryan is withholding intercourse? Clara said, you got to watch what you ask for because during the matching process, she asked for a man that isn't solely interested in sleeping with her because she's had those experiences in the past where that is really the only case that they want to sleep with her and it never goes well. So she wanted the complete opposite. And then here it is. She got what she asked for. And she's like, you really got to watch what you ask for because you may not. She didn't say this part, but you may not like it. She was talking about on the first night. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> so then Dr. Pepper said, Ryan, um, let's uh if Ryan asks you to have sex tonight, would you? She gave like a little hesitation, I think just off principle sake, because she didn't want to be like, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, she wanted to ease it in there like Maybe. If he but, felt but the, he was ready, then yeah. But listen. but that spirit in there was already out front. Like uh, when you got you leaving now, we gotta do this now. <laughs> I strongly believe that he's a virgin. That could be possibly it. Too. She's gonna be highly upset. Yeah. So for Ryan, Clara says she believes that sex for Ryan goes hand in hand with love. Ryan says he doesn't want to say I love you right now because it will no longer have the full impact and it loses its meaning. And Dr. Pepper said something that made me think about what I said a few episodes ago. Mm-hmm. She said, made me think too. Oh, we quiet. She says that um uh <clears throat> <leak>. <laughs> She said that getting off the phone um, with her family is like their thing is to say I love you because that's you'll never know if that's the last thing that you will hear from them because, you know, nothing is promised. So she said that will never lose its impact because you have to hear that you should hear that from your family. So it made me have to retract, which I really don't think I need to retract because I didn't say I didn't care for you to say that. I just said you said it a lot. And I never even said that it lost its meaning. Ryan said that. You know, take that up with Ryan. Like, I didn't say it loses its meaning. I just said Patrick will leave the house to go to the park. He says, I love you. He walks to, or he goes to the Whataburger drive through He'll say, I love you. He's going to get a coffee at Bucky's. He's saying, I love you. I never you, had a problem you, with it. Do you know what it's like being a black man in America? Uh, Not making back I, from I, checking the mail. I, 
Yes, this is true. But I, I am, might not make it back from the gas station. I am not a black man in America. Thank God. But I do know the struggles that a black man has to go through. So I get that. I do get that. So with that being said, I appreciate. Let me make it clear for the people in the back. I appreciate Why are you, screaming you, <laughs> you people. I, excru- I appreciate people. I appreciate. Yeah, if you don't appreciate it, you can't get it out. <laughs> I appreciate You're trying to pull a Haley over here. You can't pull it off. You're going to cry me call, next. Let me You're call gonna, my mom. Uh, <laughs> I tried to tell him. <laughs> Hey, we cry, boy. She be trying to make it work for her. Those Virginia crocod- too. Those crocodile tears. But yeah. I do appreciate you Virginia's saying. Virginia's tears. I be love made you because I say it back to you all the time too. <laughs> After I initiated. I'm not going nowhere. You the one always leaving the house. <laughs> I'll be right here. Yo. So yes. So for the people in the back, I never said I I did not You're appreciate. Going on and on and on. <laughs> Yes, I'm trying to clear my Just name. Stop. No, <laughs> Just I want to clear my name. Okay. My daddy got blood on this. <laughs> <laughs> this show got my daddy's blood on it, and I'm trying to clear our name. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I've been working for 13 hours. Okay, okay, we're done with that. Come on, we so, got I'm comedy sorry. hour. I'm trying to go to bed. <laughs> I want a Whataburger taquito and some sleep. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, Dr. Pepper was right. Saying I love you is very important and it will not lose its impact, right? Ryan full of bull. Dr. Pepper says, um, I love you could be the last thing that you hear. And Claire says that this is not the kind of marriage that she wants to be in. She cannot stay married to a man that never, will never, ever, ever say I love you. We'll put that thing on him. And I completely understand. <laughs> for both Wait, things. what? <laughs> for both things. I get it. Cut. I get it. <laughs> This scene is going to be another high-level overview. Vincent takes Brianna to a bodega. He, uh... Brianna looking around like, no, this is a shell gas station. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's what it was. That's why all the scenes were so tight. I've been to one. They got them here. They're not bodegas. It is not Dominican food. It's uh-huh. like... Just Mexican food. food. No, it'd be, like it'd be a whole restaurant. They be good though. The Fina up on the corner. They got the best. <laughs> they had one breakfast by my job. burritos. They had the best. I, I sandwich. Dare you to find a better <laughs> breakfast burrito? Yeah, they go hard. They do go hard. I'll eat it. I'll eat there during the COVID. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me give the high level overview. They're at this bodega. They're getting Dominican food to eat. Then they go out front to sit down and eat. Um, he talks about his life as a child growing up in the DR, and they didn't have a lot of money. He didn't come from a lot of money. He said his dad wasn't around. His aunt raised him. They came to the U.S. for a better life, and this is part of why he wants to have a family. Sound like my man B. He wants to have a family and... Um, raise children so he can give them the attention and the love that he did not receive. I felt sad for him in that moment. That's hard. That's a struggle, you know, to go through that because that stays with you. That's all that happened in that scene. That was my high-level overview. Let's move into the next scene. Do you have anything to add? I hope not. Okay, let's go. (laughs) Virginia meets up with Eric's sister-in-law. Looks like they're, like, in the clubhouse or something of the apartment. Like, she's down there cooking up margaritas. Cooking? (laughs) You mix know, it. Mix it up, margaritas. Um, <clears throat> Virginia gives her sister-in-law a little insight into how they fall out and fall back in love with each other all the time in the last six weeks. Virginia said her and Eric have differing views on her going out with her friends and that Eric should just trust her that, you know, you know, hanging out with her friends is not a bad thing. And her sister-in-law is looking at her like... ...desire to still go out with her friends a lot in general. I think we'll be not so great. Everyone look at her like that. Virginia says Eric should understand that she's had her friends for a very long time and they're kind of ahead of her ahead of him right now, but she's working her way to get him to that number one spot. How about scheduling me one weekend a month? 
I'm just telling you what she said. She's so stupid. I don't think she knows what she be saying. I don't saying think none of this me. makes any good sense. You want to sleep out. You don't have your husband as your main go-to person. You're working your way to get there. But you want you want all the bells and whistles that come with marriage, but you don't want to do the work, beloved. Like Ayanla says, you you must do the work. Yo, these two and these like, two Ayanla, didn't get the not in my house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. The sister in law looked like she's a Southern Charm cast member yeah. while Virginia's still a yeah. Florabama. I was, waiting, I was waiting for Shep to come in. <laughs> if you know the Southern Charm show. Yeah. But the whole time, Virginia's like Florabama. You know when She's not even Jersey Shore. No. She's. One of those ratchet kids from uh, from the Florabama. What yeah. is it? The Florabama house that they all be in here acting up. Really she 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 would be a perfect cast member for that show. Yep, making out with all the different dudes in their bunks and being drunk. We're just stuff. friends. We just like to kiss. <laughs> I'm moving on to the next scene because she didn't make no good sense, and the sister in law agreed. It ain't cheating if I didn't meet his mama. <laughs> Next scene, Haley and Jake are sitting on the couch waiting for Dr. Pepper to arrive for her visit. This is the most awkward 10 seconds of my life, and I'm not even in the room with them. It was just, they were so awkward sitting on that couch. Why wait on the couch? Why not just wait until the, the doorbell rings? Why not look at room? your phone? Yeah, where is y'all's phone at? Cap on each other? Something. Dr. See, you got the same pants and shoes as you went to play baseball. Yeah. So Dr. Pepper arrives and they touch on the topic of the bracelet. Good grief. And Haley blatantly disregards the importance behind the bracelet, Jake's feelings. Um, she just gives mean girl vibes to me in this episode. She's giving a lot of mean girl vibes. And I know she wasn't the cute girl in her circle of friends. So I don't know why she she's has giving, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't she and she's also giving me uh <laughs> high sitting on a high horse type of vibe too no yeah. like she's like she's just like she's really uppity to me is right. how she comes off well her booty's high on her back so <laughs> <laughs> if you be uppity like that i agree <laughs> <laughs> so any i'm not doing it so um dr pepper calls Haley out Saying that she's not showing any empathy or concern and it's clear that Jake's feelings are just hurt. And in this moment, I'm really starting to feel bad for Jake. Like, I feel like he is now the page of the episode. Like, wow. he got the rotten deal. Like, he really is wanting to make a relationship work. Was. was. He really was wanting. Yes, not currently. And she is just... Ugh. And she she done some shady stuff the whole time, so I don't feel. That's why I don't feel bad. I was just it. happy that Dr. Pepper called her out on it, and I'm sure Jake was too. I'm sure he felt so vindicated in that moment. Yeah. So good for him. He deserved all of that. He should have just so all of it up on that couch. I would have been so petty in there. I'm I sorry. mean, he's dry, but he's not. He's not. You know what? I mean, he's just dry. He's weird. He's kind of goofy but yeah but he's, he's not mean like he's his not intentions are good yeah I, can, I totally believe that she told him it was all girls knowing now that, that some, I see it, yeah. knowing that some of the husbands might have been there i could totally or see i believe that she may have thought it was all girls but then once the husband showed up she intentionally didn't call him yeah one thousand percent and with that being said i'm so glad she got called out let's move on to the next scene Dr. Pepper now stops by Eric and Virginia's apartment for a visit. visit. <laughs> I can't talk. It's late. I know. Eric says uh, he is understanding um, Virginia a lot better because she's sharing her experiences growing up, like how she didn't have her parents there and how she had to be independent and all that other stuff. Eric said that there are a list of things that you should or shouldn't do in a marriage. And Virginia's like, well, outside of cheating... There, your marriage could look like anything you want it to look like. This ain't Plato, you know. Yeah. We ain't just creating anything here. Also, like we gonna have some standards and some requirements. It also, look like we ain't married. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Pepper um, assigned them a task to create a list of goals on what their marriage should look like. And once Dr. Pepper left the house, they don't went left with each other, which we are not surprised. They always do. I always do. They went further in on the topic about. Her sleeping over at Lane and Cole's house. 
unless Lane and Cole sleep <laughs> together in the same bed, I don't want you sleeping at their house when Why I sleep definitely when I'm not in town. And I don't even I can't even put eyes on y'all to see nothing no. if I wanted to because I'm I not ain't with in it. town. Listen, but why she want to sleep over there so bad is the question. I ain't with it. You're, somebody else can buy it, but I ain't buying it. I'm not in the market. So she says, like, you know, what if it's storming outside and I, we had a lot of drinks? Like, you want me to come back home to an empty house? No, I want you to do what most responsible people do. Make plans to get home. That's what it's called, home. Exactly. That's what Home is where your head should be sleep at. Love should have brought you guys home last no, night. No, ain't no... Like, why are you all, why is this such a, a, a thing, a thing that you got to come up with? What if I'm, it's a storm you and I'm drinking. You to be sleeping at these man's house. I was over there drinking and COVID hit. Right. So now I got to stay over here and for months on the time. Yeah, yeah. I got to quarantine and lay in Cole's house now. You yeah. don't want me to come home with COVID, do you? Right. Like, you got an excuse I don't want you coming everything. home smelling like Lane and Cole. That's what I don't want. And that's a requirement. That's just something you won't do here. Not in my house. <laughs> Kiyanla, I'm yeah. sorry. And do you know what that scene is from? With Kiyanla fixed you know, my life? You know what I feel about that lady. Kiyanla <laughs> fixed my life gives me life if watching y'all want, show. If y'all want a good show of that that's lady, send her over here to this house. You have to do the work, beloved. You have to get out of my house. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Kiyanla. We're but in Texas. I'm just saying, she, <laughs> she just want to sleep at Lane and Cole's house way too much for me, and I don't like it. Why you didn't marry Lane and Cole? <laughs> That's what I don't know. Lane or Cole, you yeah. can't marry both of them. <laughs> and what two men want some female over? To sleep over so much, too. Listen. I, I have so many questions. Yeah. Y'all already know dogs don't run with cats, so everybody I was with was a dog, but no people I hung out with in my 20s no dudes wanted a girl over their house that had a boyfriend much less a husband yeah you don't think lady cole want their privacy all of them she people a, she space a, all the time she a house mouse <laughs> a house mouse <laughs> she a house mouse i ain't never heard somebody and get called a listen, house mouse house mouse and the dudes that oh mickey mouse went to college <laughs> and shared a house mickey or mouse. <laughs> was in the military and shared a house if you shared a house with other dudes in your age group or y'all was all in the streets y'all know what a house mouse is i ain't never heard of no house mouse but that tickles my entire soul see <laughs> see hear that it shouldn't and, uh, <laughs> Okay, maybe you shouldn't. Ryan and Clara are sitting down writing letters to their younger selves. She reads her letter. She says she's been, actually before she reads her letter, she says she's been feeling awkward ever since Dr. Pepper left because she just doesn't know like where Ryan is with the love thing. Like she's falling in love with him, but you know, Ryan is doing him. Can I be honest? What? Can I be honest, honest about that letter? Keep it a buck. That was the thirstiest letter ever written and read to a person's face <laughs> and it them was. not let get me, it let me explain the letter. and them not get it or show they didn't get it but let, let me explain the letter because you always jumping ahead of me before i could say i wanted it. to be loved see look at him you said you read the letter and bled her heart out there was no other way for her to bleed her heart out to her 15 year old self about being loved she's and writing it directly to ryan that and, letter was to Ryan. It was clearly to Ryan. She was flustered and as red as this Bucky's cup trying to get through this letter. And she read it sure. and said how much she wanted to be loved. And Ryan said... 50, 11 times. Okay, let me read my letter to you. <laughs> That's literally what he did. Okay, like, sure. He was like... Okay. Okay, sure. Okay, let me read my letter. <laughs> he didn't receive none of that. Ryan, don't change a thing. That was his... If you don't stop jumping ahead of me, we're going to have some problems in here. Can we... Can you calm down? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Just because you got on a biggie shirt. Let me tell you something about I, your boy. I, I just realized we ain't here looking like Paige's purse. 
It did dawn on me. <laughs> that, that pack of bananas, it did hit me. I was like, yo, we are giving banana vibes tonight. But it's okay. You know, we're killing the game. Shout out so. to Paige. We meant to do that. Yes. Because Paige wasn't in the episode. Paige so. and um, Chris was clearly absent in this episode. Clearly, it was like they didn't even give them a piece of of time to show their faces. They were very absent in this episode. And rightly so, ain't nothing left to say here. You got all the air time they gonna give you, Chris, to be acting up. And Paige, you got all the air time you gonna get to be acting up to. Was she acting up? I mean, she gave him too many, you know, chances. And this just goes back to when you start a relationship talking about eating booty, it never works said, out. It never said. works out. You got to keep... That's got to be sprung on them. Ah, <laughs> Secretively. You got a good memory. You can't go in talking about that kind of thing. It don't she work out. She did. She did. And that's exactly what she let him do. Like... Yeah. Or she did. Like, I don't find you... Att- my head. I don't find you attractive. I don't care. <laughs> Done. That was a, a bullhorn. I don't care. Is that what that was? I don't <laughs> care. After Claritum bled her heart out through ink and white sheet of paper, <laughs> she did. He took his paper. He was like, okay, let me read you mine. <laughs> Ryan, don't change a thing. You have done everything just perfect and just right. And I am very proud of everything you've done. And she's sitting there looking like. I know good and hell well he's not telling his young self that he done did everything right where he has yet to tell me he loved me when he has yet to lay my body down and he has yet to do the work, beloved. He laid her body down. He just ain't get on top. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, Ryan seems like he'll be one of those dudes that years from now his son will come back like, Dad, I just... Graduated Harvard with a 4.0. He'll just be like, we got to go get this. Uh, yeah. We got to go put it, the brakes on a, this truck. Is it a lack of like, showing emotions? Is, what that is, what he, is that the issue? Like he's just, he has a lack of showing emotion. That or... haircut and his beard just screams like anti-social. <laughs> I don't want to be bothered. Somebody in the comment interact. section last week, and I forgot who said it, but they were like, his beard is so Sparse as, <laughs> you know what? I was dead. I was dead when they said that. That was the funniest crap to me. But um, yeah, he didn't care. So they were on two different spectrums. And my thoughts were if two opposite ends of the spectrum was a couple, you'd see Ryan Claire. They not, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work out. My mind will be blown to see if they stay together on decision day. But let's move on to the final scenes of this episode. (laughs) The final scene of this episode pissed me off Meghan Markle royally. I was so pissed when seeing Haley going into the room to FaceTime her mom to ask her mom to please ship the bracelet that Jake bought for her. Thanks. So Jake got upset about the bracelet again. So if you could please send it back so that he can have it in his possession and we don't worry about that anymore. Tacky, if you're going to give a gift, you give the gift. And if we could not bring up how much it costs again, that would be nice too. Well, that's ridiculous. So he can have it in his possession once and for all, which is not what he asked. He asked you to have the bracelet shipped so you can have it as an option to show that you actually care about his sentimental gift. And he's not asking you to have it shipped. He's saying he wished you would have had it. Showed some interest to do that. He's not saying you need to get it here now. He's saying... I I wish you would have done that on your own, basically, but you're too dense to get that. I'm telling you, the reality versus people's interpretation is something else because she interpreted that completely opposite of what he was saying, what she wanted to hear. And this is how you get people's mamas cussed out because Mm -hmm. she went on to the phone with Lisa Vanderpump. (laughs) Vanderpump rules. And told her all kinds of bad information and yes. got her making snarky little comments yes. like if you can't 
get it to give this yeah. not that ain't what's when happening you gift is something someone a gift and you need to learn how to gift it to them well you're gonna get with, cussed out with your geriatric because <laughs> because that is not what he was saying he didn't say he wanted the gift back he didn't say that um it cost him this much money and you don't care about it he brought up the cost because you tried to compare it to a walmart a walmart <laughs> aisle 12 hat that you bought for him. not even a new era hat like yeah. not even a fitted hat yeah this is one of them ones you get out the albertson's that's what i'm saying for ten dollars in front of the register you yeah. gotta have that section <laughs> it wasn't even in the lids you got that hat at a grocery store so said walmart aisle 12 yeah you know, it's one of those mesh <laughs> snapbacks snapbacks yeah. and tattoos <laughs> remember that song yes <laughs> Sorry. That's was, not a snapback. <laughs> I'm just so upset. Ooh, but, floppy you know, hat. Um, Jake was petty petty and, and, and left the hat on the dresser since she mentioned it. Who likes Alabama? I guess it's a college team. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. They're, like, so they're probably he, one of those. He shouldn't have. I'll be fair. He shouldn't have house. left the hat on the, the dresser. Like, you know, man, just, just to be petty, you should have just wore the hat around. Dave the Chappelle, Rick James, F yo hat. Stop all over the hat. Especially <laughs> after you done sent my jewelry to home with Lisa Vanderpump <laughs> to Alabama. You got to be out your rabbit mind. Send it back. <laughs> yeah. So she told her mom all the wrong information, which really grinded my gears because I'm like, that's not what was said. And this is how you get people caught up by lying on people. And I, I, I want to say, and I'm hope, I'm hoping that she isn't intentionally lying. And this is just a misunderstanding on how she interpreted what he said. But I don't know. I'm trying to be fair. Juice box. <laughs> I was just, I, I was really upset with her. She she really fell off my list on, Karen. on people. Yeah. On Karen. people that I, 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 I'm not, I'm not feeling her. That was very wrong. Like you're trying to assassinate somebody's character by, by saying all those things that they want their gift back and they're trying to talk about how much it costs. And that, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case at all. So anyways, um, she, uh. She asked her mom to send it back and her mom said that she will overnight it or she would even try to drive it out to her if she has to. Right. All right. You don't want none. (laughs) You don't want this smoke. (laughs) You don't want this. This ain't what you want. (laughs) Yo, (laughs) she talking about driving up here. Don't get DMX, lady. (laughs) Mind your business, lady. Don't come over here for the smoke because you're going to get it. All right. That's all I have for the end of this episode. What did you think about episode 14? Drop your comments in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. We love talking back and forth with you every week. Hit us up. Also, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button to support our channel. Yes. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and liking. We really Deuces. appreciate you. Madonna. I always touch you. God, oh. So, thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for watching. We will see you guys next Friday. Deuces. <laughs> All right, Jake. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>